Doing a sequel is always weird because you want to do something that's as interesting as the thing you did before. You want the costumes to feel like they still belong to the same character you created in the early film, but you don't want them to be the same clothes. It's me, Alice. On Through the Looking Glass, Alice has grown up. She's come back. We didn't really want her to be in a conventional gown. She's just not that person. So the skirt's a pants skirt. <gasps> I do wish you'd have worn that yellow dress. I based her costume on the idea that she's been in China. Her collar is elements of fabric and leather that are all hand cut and applied together in a sort of pagoda shape. And then the little metallic pieces are based on the trim Indonesian wedding and dance costumes have. Curious, curious. When you do details on costumes, a lot of them are hidden and you don't see them right away. As an audience member, there's a lot of things in costumes that the camera doesn't even see, like the Asian style embroidery detail on Alice's costume with the hats and the rabbits makes it not just another costume, but Alice's costume. Through the Looking Glass is full of those kind of details, and it's something that, as you watch the movie, you can catch if you know about it, but, but it's also easy to miss. I've known Johnny a long time. He's one of those actors that really puts his costume on and feels that he very seldom looks in the mirror in a fitting. I give him things to kind of play with and see what he gravitates towards, and then it kind of gives me a lead on where to go with the costume. Well, you are in luck. I had this pin cushion ring, and he was like, ah. And then, you know, he started playing with his hands, and we know Johnny likes a bit of jewelry, so that right away was kind of a taking off point for the character and how he could use things as a hatter who took his hat making things with him when he went out into the world. I found all these antique spools and threads in a flea market, and I put them together with a beautiful silver chain that I thought was a really amazing hipster piece of jewelry that I took apart to make a bandolero-style piece. The Red Queen's costume is a deconstructed version of her costume from the first film. It's just decayed because she's been out on her own in the faraway desert where she was exiled. Now on dearest, I'm in charge. I made it like it had sort of been put together by her minions. Hello, Alice. I really love her armor costume. It has a thorn heart that was all hand sculpted and built here in Los Angeles. And then we did a weird cage out of military braid for her skirt. And we put a heart on the toe of her shoes since she's the queen of hearts. There's actually one hidden on the foot of her shoe, which you see in the first movie. Who has ticked the last tock? Tocked the last Sasha Baron Cohen, he had so many ideas for his character. He's a physical actor. We love the idea of like these little spindly legs and curly toed boots. It's an almost animated way to design a character. We wanted him to be part of time but not look like a clock. I took in his shoulders a sort of loosely shaped back like a grandfather clock. And then on his hand, he has a beautiful kind of watch timepiece that we made out of chain mail and some old pieces of clocks put together that go over his glove. I had an amazing prop maker on that named David Bethel, who did all those beautiful pieces you see on Time's costume. I like that I never know what I'm going to do next. I may skip from Alice in Wonderland to, you know, a space movie or a musical. You never know what you're going to encounter. Every time you start something, it's fresh and it's new and it's exciting. So that's what makes it work for me.